September 28, 9.51 a.m. Court, Benden Lobby Number 2. Three. This is it. Judgment Day. Judgment Day, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Ah! What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touch your shoulder. Guess the shock hasn't run, worn off from my run-in with Sunday yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Hmm. Edgeworth is looking glum, as always. I hope one karma doesn't push him too hard. Hmm. Oh! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. Just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. But you'd like to keep anyone on your way out. <laughs> oh, yeah, pal. <laughs> Got into that girl. Detective Gumshoe. Morning. Dredgewood. Uh, good morning. Did it go, Detective? Got no fear. As promised, I've captured a runaway care caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. <laughs> Yogi says he's forgotten his name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edward if he couldn't remember his past? Does remember? I'm going to prove it. Number 28, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 3. <laughs> The court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mm. The prosecution is ready. Mm. Uh, right, very well. We've reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Mm. Come on, don't be odd in this island. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental caretaker, boat rental shop caretaker, has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. We would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring your witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now tell. I, I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. <clears throat> I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I was running away enough. I uh, went to buy some food for policy. I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? I don't got one. So, my testimony yesterday stands as is. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. First off, what do I still have? Things... Bella took things away. 
that he took all the stuff. Why do I have the stuff if he took all the stuff? Bark, bark, bark. And call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Your scenes relax. In fact, they both do, from Karma and the Yami Yogi. Running away or nothing. Went to buy some food for Polly Really. The parrot was not cared for. Polly's a bit of a gourmand, you see. Joe may eat these high quality burnt pellets from the brand. They won't have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the Kelly shack? Oh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering a thing sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Right, a nice try, Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Rana, come to your senses. And you got nothing to do with his incident. Oh, he did take the letter. Lost much of your memory, is that correct? Okay, yep, seems like. And how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or. Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. And look it up. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Okay, so what do I have that actually shows who he is? The parrot knows the DL6 incident. The parrot knows about the DL6 incident. Am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old copper's head? But that's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness, please continue. Motive things right, you don't got one, but you do! How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You have a grudge against Edward and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh, how this is interesting. I would like to know myself, so who is he? Like dumb fun karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness' name. 
His name is Danny Yogi, a former court bailiff. Okay. That name seems familiar. Hmm. Oh. Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. He figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Brother, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? Hmm. This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. It. You have to do this now. And prove is Yogi right here, right now. Got nowhere else to go. Nick, are you going to prove it? Can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay, it's actually cool. Simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. You see, that makes sense. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprint. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at the chemical plant. I've heard my fingers working with the stuff. Yep. What? Yogi, you sneak! You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past! Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. Oh! Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Ah. Uh. Hmm? It seems that the case has been decided. No. I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. No. I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. It has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprint. So what do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Miss Thumb Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What is it, Nick? No, oh, you're not going to... Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> order, order. Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask the farce object? Wait a second! You are the one who suggested I cross examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Hmm. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, I'm sure that I. Hope you're ready for the concert. Nick, crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Yes. Let the parrots take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. 
Hmm. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. One can almost read every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parents, she's my last chance. <coughs> At least, you think so. <coughs> Bailiff, bring in the parrot. <laughs> <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> um, very well. Witness. Where's your owner? Please uh, testify for us. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross examination. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? Hmm. I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Uh. Well, I don't present things to the parrot. I'm moderately sure. But we might be able to press the parrot. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right. Uh, what do I say? Have we forgotten something? As I recall, two days ago... Holly, Holly, have we forgotten something? Huh? Don't forget DL6. I can get Polly to say that here. That will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello. Huh? Hmm? Well, what are you supposed to say? Forgot something. Something we forgot. Hello, hello. Huh? Oh. Not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Oh. I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Hmm. I didn't press this one. Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot. Oh. I guess we should try to get some information out of it. Yeah. Okay, so how do we show that? Out of what we have. Think about the witness statement. Uh, I'm not sure I follow. It clearly contradicts the. I thought. You don't have to convince Mr. Wright. 
Objection of a rogue. Oh, they can't point me any point. Dutch. Okay, so... Do I just keep best-seeking the parent? Clearly showing things isn't gonna work. The file. A summary. Date 12 28, 2001. Location elevator district courthouse. Air and elevator was oxygen depleted at time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Victim data. Gregory Edgeworth, age 35. Defense attorney. Trapped in elevator returning from the lost trial with son. Miles Edgeworth, age 9. One bullet found at heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Suspect data. Yanni Yogi, age 37. Fort Bailey, talked in elevator with Edgeworth. Memory loss due to oxygen deprivation. After his arrest, fiancé Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Named the parrot after his fiancé? He's cutting cakes. That's not gonna do anything. Okay, okay. So showing things isn't going to help, but I can keep pressing my thing. I should get her to say her name. Holly, Holly, what's your name? Holly, Holly, huh? Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with the owner's identity? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Hmm? Oh, fascinating. I'm going with the parrot's name won't prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Don't you think you're taking the bumping a little too far? Yes, sir. Not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker, but here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, <clears throat> the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is. DL6 case file. Take that! There we go. A DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on then? Show us a stop wasting our time. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? Suspect data. Look at it again, just. Victim data, suspect data. On the suspect data page. Hmm? This page has all the information about Yane Yogi. But right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm. It does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Holly Jink. Holly. Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiancée who had committed suicide. And that's why he named his parrot after 
Yes, that is possible. Not like you don't name parrots Polly and Kendall. Objection! Oh, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiancé? She's only seven years old. Indeed. Alone is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where are we going to find that? Nick, get closer. More. You just get one more piece of evidence. Right. What? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. <laughs> can't just say hello and expect us to do anyway. I want you to testify. I am you, Doctor. Alright, this time you say safe number. Another thing that ties you. Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. Huh? Safe? Why? Look, just try to get her to say anything, okay? Holly, who's the number of the safe in the shack? 1228! 1228! Hmm? Ah, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. It does. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Oh, ridiculous. How can the number to escape tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? File again. 1228. Case summary. Take that! DL6 case file. What is the obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something relating to that safe number? It's on the case summary page. Case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. Date of the incident, December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. The number on that safe is 1228. Ah. We use the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. Certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Objection! Oh, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to... triple zero one because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. That's enough. We've reached a conclusion here. It's a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately.